going on YouTube? Kilts of Gunsmith here with a follow-up video on the part one of three of the Lee Enfield number one Mark III restoration. For those of you who have not seen, I'll have the link in the video. I did a revealing of a C-grade number one Mark III Lee Enfield, um, just showing casing what it's like to get a C-grade Lee Enfield. If anyone was wondering um, what it's like to actually see one that's not from RTI, trying to show them off or uh, not giving accurate pictures of what a C grade actually looks like. So I did a video just showcasing the whole thing, what was obviously wrong with it on the outside. I was going to do a video tearing it all apart, but a lot of it's rusted and seized and kind of a pain in the ass. So I just took it apart and I'm going to talk about each part and what uh, everything that's going to entail. So before anyone uh, comments, I don't care that if it looks like a piece of shit or if it's trashy. Um, I've had people in the first video say that thing's a piece of shit, just throw it away. Um, that's not what this is about. This is about doing what I enjoy. This is about showing what you can turn something beat up and old and turn it into something nicer, usable, and you appreciate and love the things you have more when you put your time and sweat and work ethic into it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start over showing with the barrel and the receiver assembly. Now, besides a shit ton of rust and dirt, obviously it's going to be in really rough shape. Now this piece here is the rear handguard, all that's left of it. I mean, just pop, going to pop that off. I already got a few parts in that I'm going to replace. I got a new ish rear handguard to replace it with. And I got a few other parts that I'm going to swap out like the fire and pin spring. Um, and now obviously it's not a hundred percent piece by piece disassembled, but I wanted to get a bulk of it down to show you everything as best as I can. Now it's really rusted. It's going to be pitting. Even when I get it all cleaned up and refinished, there's going to be pitting. But from what I can tell, it's still completely serviceable and usable. There is still rifling inside. It is pretty funky and dirty and rusted, but showing the barrel, just shining it up through the light. I'm going to see if I can do that with you guys. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, not really much help, but I did check the bore before I even started doing anything. There's no obstructions, no bulges, nothing like that, just rust and dirt. And you can clearly still see the rifling, which is great. Um, most of the time, these are going to be basically smooth bore. Um... The only thing that is really missing besides the magazine, which they tell you in the description that the magazine is going to be missing, the uh, front sling mount that's on the barrel band was broken off. Not a big deal. I got the rear handguard already piece. I haven't taken the safety apart, but just kind of showing everything. Um, there's really not much missing or damaged otherwise besides it just being really funky. Now, it just gives you an idea of how the Ethiopians treated their firearms. So this is the trigger guard and trigger. I mean, besides, again, being rust and stuff, I'm sure it'll clean up relatively nice. The rear sight protector. Uh, again, besides the obvious, they're dirty as shit. The front handguard assembly piece. It's a lot of dirt and just galfing and manging. She had dirty. But I think it'll clean up pretty good. Just a very minor crack at the very tip here. Uh, the screw and everything was still there. There was a side screw missing on the front barrel band here. The screw by my finger. That was missing. Again, not a big deal. Nothing major is missing, which is good. And for shits and gigs, when I was at the shop, when I got it in... I bore sided it and the sights were still on center, which is quite surprising. But nothing too serious besides some loving. Um, I don't have the fire and pin uh, takedown tool yet. I got one ordered, so I can't take this down any further. The ejector, bolt face, spring, and the firing pin are still completely functional. The extractor is completely functional, spring tension. Now again, the pieces that I have not fully disassembled will get there. Front barrel band, this thing's gunky. It has like some kind of fabric material inside of it, which is kind of weird. That 
still clamps, still opens. So I'm looking forward to doing this project. Now, the only thing I might actually replace, because it's going to be pretty tricky to fix, is the front handguard. Big ass cracks. But I mean, it's still in one piece, so I might be able to fix it. I might give a shot and try and fix it. But uh, most likely, I'm just going to end up replacing it. But I want to try my hand at it and see if I can fix it or not. Probably do like a, a glue epoxy mix or something. I don't know. Kind of experiment a little bit in the front piece is really rusted almost completely through but uh yeah i did finally get a sandblast cabinet and that's mainly what i was waiting on to start this project here's the butt stock you want to see the grossest part underneath the brass plate butt pad it's got some copper corrosion brass corrosion whatever i still need to take out the disc piece now you can see at one point they replaced the toe with a splice um Overall, though, pretty good shape. The bolt's still stuck inside. I need to get that out. Some cracking on the left side of the stock. Nothing too deep. It's just Ethiopia, a hot, dry-ass country, and uh, they just store these in giant metal warehouses. So, again, many years of neglect. Biggest pain in the ass was uh, getting the screws out of this butt pad. And here's the real nasty part. Ugh. Look at all that gunk and corrosion and... Nice thing about brass, though, it doesn't actually, like, rust. It just has some corrosion, because steel and copper uh, don't agree, so they corrode each other, kind of. And just to show you the small bits of screws and sling swivel and stuff, these are probably the most best shape out of all the parts, metal work-wise. And the, again, I'm showing you this piece. I already got a bayonet. I got a Ishapur 308 Enfield uh, Indian one, and I got a bayonet that'll work on it. It's a reproduction, and it will fit on this as well. So I already got a bayonet ready to go. And show you the bolt body again. And when I got it out of the box after I ordered it, it was stiff to open up, obviously, but trigger pulled fine. Firing pins surprisingly decent shape and I took a brass case with a primer no bullet or powder and it went off perfect indentation which surprised me and overall um, shouldn't be too bad it's gonna be a lot of time sandblasting I think what I might end up doing is possibly black oxide I might use dichropan which is a form of bluing, which I've been using a lot lately on customers' projects. And Dicopan is quick, it's easy, penetrates deep, and works really well and looks really clean. So I think I'm going to Dicopan this. Um, kind of show you the markings the best that I can. So, uh, for what it's worth. Sorry, it's, the rest is kind of covering up the markings. But you can see the IO ink RTI import marks. So I think this will be a pretty fun, neat project. So before you comment, throw it in the trash, be negative. I'm just going to ignore your shit because I ain't got time for the bullshit. If you like these kind of projects, I know some of you originally subscribed to me because of this kind of stuff. I'll try to keep out the content the best that I can. I've been pretty busy with work and school. So trying to get content out as much as I can. I've been doing a lot of ration videos and shooting videos because they're easy to do, not as time consuming. But I figured it's about damn time to do some kind of gunsmith content. Um, might have some more gunsmithing related uh, videos for a uh, magazine, tube magazine repair, depending on what it is. I got an old, uh, I think it's a Winchester 60. Um, the two magazines kind of dented, so I'm going to take it apart, look at it, and see what's actually wrong with it, and uh, maybe do a video about it. So, just one last little quick review. Show everything down at once. So, barrel, four-inch stock, and again, everything's not 100% piece by piece taken apart yet. I just finished getting it together. So... Hope you guys and gals are looking forward to this. So like I said, it's going to be a three-part video series. Um, this is just the disassemble inspection, basically. 
And I also have fire pin spring, ejector spring, sorry, extractor spring. I have the rear four end piece already. I need to get a new front sling swivel and a front screw and that might and a magazine of course and that might be about it but other than that the rest is just gonna be elbow grease sanding sandblasting refinishing and my second video will be a about a midway uh overview going over what i've done what i still need to do kind of show like the after the cleaning and sandblasting and sanding like the prep work and then the last video will be the end of the project going over all the other stuff that I've had to go over. Um, the little intricacies and details and stuff that I did um, or what I didn't have to do, whatnot. And then, of course, the shooting. See how it shoots. See how accurate it is. Do it at like a 25, 50 yard and then 100 yard and target and see how that comes out. I'm not expecting it to be in sub MOA. Obviously, these guns weren't really sub MOA for the most part. I mean, they could be accurized and stuff, but this gun I just got for fun to get practice. Something I could shoot. I intend and have already casted for these before. I've had a 303 before and uh, I cast my bullets, so casting will help a little bit due to the rifling deterioration. So, casting is good if you have a worn barrel, it, it's a little bit wider than a standard FMJ. So, Maybe I'll do a video on casting for the 303 and uh, load data uh, in the future. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts are besides being an asshole and telling me just throw it in the trash or stop being a shithead or whatever. I don't care. I enjoy this stuff. If you don't, don't watch my content, plain and simple. I've had to tell people off before. I don't care if you don't like my potty mouth. Uh, you know, dumb shit as usual. Go watch some liberal stuff if you get sensitive over every little thing or whatever. If you don't like guns, don't watch gun content, plain and simple. But I'm just yammering at this point. So thanks again and hope you guys enjoyed. And stick around, like, and subscribe if you want to see the uh, midway and final video. And then once I get a chance, I'll put the what it looked like completely together after I unboxed it and took it out. And just kind of talk about it for a minute. So... See you all later. Have a good one. Be safe.